The data that we see up on the board right now represents the data for trial number eight for one of the groups that did the activity yesterday. Now, you can see four columns here, time, position, velocity, and acceleration. The last two columns are irrelevant to us. Uh, you might think that the third column might be really important. Okay, why do we need to plot a graph if we've already got the velocity? Because in the end, that's what we want to get here, right, is the initial velocity and the final velocity within trial number eight. The problem is this. The velocity in, in uh, column C there, the third column, is instantaneous velocity. And the instantaneous velocity can change a little bit. Okay, if there's a bad data point, all of a sudden the instantaneous velocity can be off by a lot. If we essentially average our data points, and I don't mean by that add them up and divide by the number, I mean average them by graphing, then we're going to account for bad data points. So we don't want to look at the velocity in column C, and the acceleration in column D is completely irrelevant. So what we're going to do, just to tidy it up a little bit, is delete those two columns. I'm just going to literally highlight the columns and delete them. Okay, I don't even need to really delete them. Okay, I can leave them there if I want. I just don't want to see them there because I don't want to get mixed up and plot the wrong columns. Okay? So now what I want to do is actually plot position versus time. I'm going to do that by highlighting the position column, although notice I'm not highlighting the word position. I'm starting in uh, cell B2. That's the second row in the second column. Okay, I highlight that column. Now I'm going to insert a scatter plot. Don't insert the line graph. That's what we tend to want to do is insert a line graph. That's not what we want here. Okay, you want a scatter plot, always. Pick the first option. It's going to look something like this. The shape of it is good. Okay, that's the shape that we expected. Maybe there's some points kind of in the beginning that we don't want and some points in the end that we don't want. But in, this, but, uh, in the middle, we see two distinct straight lines that we do want. Now, there's a problem with this. If you look at the x-axis, the x-axis goes from 0 to 31. I don't want it to go from 0 to 31. I want it to go from 0 to 2.9. What is this x-axis representing right now? It's the trial number. Okay, it's not uh, the time. It's the trial number. I don't want to plot uh, the position versus trial number. I want to plot the position versus time. Excel automatically plots it versus trial number, though. So i got to change that. Here's what I'm going to do to change it. I'm going to go up and I'm going to select data. I'm going to edit. And you can see on my y-axis here, my series y values are already done. Okay, it says, it's kind of coded here, but if you look closely at it, you can see it's, it's column B starting in row 2. Okay, so I've got what I want on the y-axis, but on the x-axis it's blank. So I'm going to click on this and highlight my x-axis now, all my x values in time. Click on the little button, click OK, click OK again. Now all of a sudden you see the same shape, but now you see along the x-axis my time, 0 to 2.9 seconds, as opposed to 0 to 31 trials. Okay, so far so good. There's my basic graph. Now that's not going to get me velocity, and it's not going to get me uh, for before the interaction has taken place or after the interaction has taken place, but it's the first step that I need to follow here. Okay. Now, if you take a look at the graph itself, you can see that the first bunch of data points are going to be irrelevant for us. That's when cart number one was at rest. So let's see what data points we need to cut off. If we just hover over this data point, which is the last bad one, the last one that we don't want, you can see that it starts at 0 0.7 seconds. So we want to delete the data from 0 up to 0 0.7 seconds. Gone. Now take a look at the graph. Now all that data isn't there. So now I have VI, I have VF, and I've got some other stuff in here too. Let's get rid of these ones. Okay, let's hover over this. At 2.2 seconds, the data starts being irrelevant data, extraneous data. So let's delete from 2.2 seconds all the way to the end. Now it gives me a graph that looks like this. Notice I have not labeled my x, y axis. I have not labeled my, uh, my title, any of that stuff, right? Okay. In the end, I don't really need to do that for these graphs because you're not presenting anything with these graphs. You're just going through it real quickly to get the initial and final velocity. Make sense? If you did need to present it and you did need to include it in your final product, okay, all you do, 
all you do is click on chart layouts, pick the first one, and then type in the title, type in your axes, and so on. Make sense? All right. Now, what I want to do is create two sets of data. Okay, I want to create two sets of data. Right now, I've got one. Okay, I want to create two. The first set of data is going to go up to 1.1 seconds. Okay, up to 1.1 seconds. My second set of data is going to go from 1.2 all the way to the end. So now I've got position, sorry, position and time for before the collision has taken place and position and time for after the collision has taken place. Because I just deleted the final data, right, this stuff right here, I just deleted it from my original column. My original graph shows me my initial velocity. All I have to do to find that velocity is click on a point, right click, add a trend line. It's already going to say linear. That's what we want here. Display the equation on the chart down at the bottom here. Close it. The slope of that graph is 1.76. That means that my initial velocity is 1.76 there. That make sense? Now, I know that I've gone through this a little bit fast in terms of deleting data and moving data and so on. Okay, but as long as it makes sense, then you're all good. Because you can go back and watch this to kind of get a, a refresher on it, right? As long as it makes sense. If it doesn't make sense to you, then we've got a problem and you need to ask, you need to ask some questions okay, if it doesn't make any sense to you. All right, now I'm going to go back and create a graph again with my, with my data for after the collision. That's this stuff right here. Let's go insert a scatter plot. Okay, let's make sure my, my x-axis isn't trial number, but let's sure my x, make sure my x-axis is the time. So once again, let's go select data, edit. My x values will be these values right here. Okay, again, this was my data for after the collision has taken place. Click the button, click OK, click OK, and there it is. Again, I can label my axes if I want. In the end, the VF versus VI graph that you need to put into your lab write-up, you should label your axes, and you should put your title in. It's just not necessary for these ones because, again, you're not presenting these ones. Let's once again click on a data point, right-click, add a trend line, it's going to say linear because it's a straight line. Let's display the equation on the chart. Let's click close, and there it is. So my initial velocity was 1.76. My final velocity for that trial was 0 0.5697. Does that make sense? Would you expect the final velocity to be smaller than the initial velocity? Well, you would because you saw that it was less, right? You saw with your own eyes that it was less. But even before we began the activity, you probably could have made that prediction. If you have a certain amount of momentum and it's, and it's in a light object, but it's transferred to an object that's roughly twice the mass, then you're going to have a velocity that is quite a bit smaller, right? So this, this data looks pretty good. We don't know if it's perfect or not until we actually go to plot our VF versus VI graph, but it looks pretty good. How long has that taken us to do? Eight minutes and 41 seconds. And I explained it to you as I went. Okay, you can imagine that we could do this easily, that one trial easily, in a minute and a half or two minutes if I'm not trying to explain it as I go, if you're doing it just yourself at your desk yourself. So any questions on that? Remember, what have we got here? We've got the value of VI right here. And we'll get the value of VF right here for trial number eight. That's it. You got to do this same process for trial one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, and ten. But again, it's not going to take you nine minutes per trial. It's going to take you a minute and a half per trial or two minutes per trial. Okay. You guys clear on that? Excellent.